Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy. What inspired this video was I was driving home from work and I was listening slash watching a video by a YouTuber named Dogpack404 who's been doing these, these breakdowns, these expose videos on a YouTuber by the name of Mr. Beast. A YouTuber I don't even need to explain to any of you. If you've ever been on YouTube, you know who Mr. Beast is, even if you've never watched his content, which I never have. And don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll share my opinions on Mr. Beast in a, in a bit, but I'm not trying to make him the center of this video. There's a bigger topic at hand. And by the way, check out Dogpack404's video, support him. The latest video he released was really eye-opening. Uh, I felt bad for the person he was interviewing. I kind of see myself in him, and if I was in his situation, I I probably would have done the same thing. You know, it's always the people that seem like the most energetic, the most joyous, that get the short end of the stick, or are suffering the most. They just keep it bottled up, because they don't want to spread that type of energy out in the world. They want to bring joy and happiness, and I can relate to that. Hell, Robin Williams was like that too. And it got me thinking. You know, when we see people like Mr. Beast who blow up out of nowhere and get this notoriety and this fame and all this money and power and all that stuff. You know, it got me thinking, honestly. The first question was actually, is it worth being YouTube famous? That was the theme of what this video was supposed to be. Because, you know, it's not just Mr. Beast. There's been so many YouTubers throughout the years who, you know, they, they were at the height of their power. They, they were well-known, they were well-respected, but then they get exposed for either being shitty people or for doing shitty things or the truth behind their true intents or actions gets exposed, and we see them for the liars, manipulators, abusers, uh, groomers that they are. I mean, the list can go on. It's not just Mr. Beast, Dr. Disrespect, right? The I forget the name of the person that works with Mr. Beast. There's also the Cody Co. situation. Hell, even a guy like Moist Critical was dealing with some backlash for opinions that he had on the internet. And again, at first it started off with the whole like, is it worth being YouTube famous? But then it made me think, well, it's not really just YouTubers that this affects. It really affects anybody that is famous. Cause you know, at a certain point, you'll reach such a height of fame that no matter what you do, you're going to piss off somebody. You're gonna annoy somebody, you're gonna, you're going to wrong somebody and then you can get exposed for like something very simple or something really extreme. Which brings up the question of this video, which brings up the question you see in the title. Is fame truly worth it? Honestly. Is fame, is that type of attention, those that kind of exposure, is it truly worth having in this life. I know like many, maybe most of you, you've had dreams of making it big, becoming a superstar, your name on the screen, your name up in lights as they used to say back in the day. I don't think they do that anymore because that that's referencing how movie theaters like had the marquee signs that literally were surrounded by lights, my name up in lights kind of thing. But we... At one point, I feel like most people have had the dream of making it big, being a celebrity, being well-known. And it really comes down to the core feeling of wanting just to be loved, accepted, and popular. Because who doesn't want to be popular? Who doesn't want to be well-known or well-liked and things like that? It's, it's a core human, not trait... But it's a core human desire to want to be liked and loved. To have people that respect and revere you. And 
Usually the most respected, revered individuals are people that are constantly in the spotlight. Famous people. Most people know who Dwayne The Rock Johnson is than they do what their senator's name is. Can you name the senator of your state? No. But I bet you you could find out what famous actors from your state. Or maybe you might already know what famous actors from your state. And that's the thing. It's such a tantalizing, interesting, and exciting career path. You know? It's alluring because you get exposed to it so much it and it also like plays off to your ego like hey if you get famous you get to drive these awesome cars you get to go to all these famous places you get to go to all these fun events you get to meet some of the sexiest people in the world you know who wouldn't want to have that right it's tantalizing however when you strip the veneer of what it means to be famous i mean if you think about it, living a famous life is kind of sad. You know, a lot of these fame, like, let, let's really look at it. Because I feel like fame is a double-edged sword when it's all said and done. Yes, you get the fame, you get the notoriety, you get all those eyes and attention on you. You know, you have people that truly love and respect you. People that are willing to go extreme lengths to see you. However... The downfall of this is that you will never get to have a private life ever again. Every single action, every single thing, every single inch you take will be monitored by somebody. It could be paparazzi. It could just be your legion of fans. It could be the local stalker <laughs> across the street. You will never have a private life ever again. Your, your life will constantly be in the tabloids, constantly be in YouTube videos, constantly be on the internet in some way, shape, or form. So you can just throw out having a private life. You will never have that again. And in addition to that, tying into the fact that you won't have a private life again, no matter or whatever you do, will be out there for people to see, even if you don't want them to see it. You might even have opinions that might go against the fray that many people may not agree with, may not be, you know, vibing with, and they might turn against you for it. You know, not only that, but like, I feel like you can never truly trust people. Like, I get it, you're going to have like some close friends, but how many of them are truly your friends at the end of the day? You know, if the money dries up, are they really going to be around? That's the true friends. Most celebrities abandon their true friends and they stick with a bunch of yes men, a bunch of famous people that are kind of there with them on the same level. But it's a, it's a pretty lonely life. Not to mention it's a very exhausting life because you have to maintain the appearance of being wealthy. You have to maintain the appearance of being popular. You have to maintain the look and feel of a celebrity. You'll never get to escape it. If That's if you want to be. If you want to be famous, you want to be popular, you want to be all those things, you have to maintain the actual look. You have to maintain the lifestyle that comes with being rich and famous. And that too is exhausting. And it could really change who you are as a person. How many times have we seen celebrities who... They, you know, humble beginnings, you know, they were such sweet, nice people. Then they become famous and then they, became, they become complete douchebags. Assholes. And that leads to my second thing. When it comes to being famous, in my opinion, from how I see it now, there's only really one or two paths and maybe a third if you're lucky. If you're lucky, that's the key phrase. And the two paths are being famous either brings out the worst in you or it completely drains you and takes everything from you. Going down that first path brings out the worst in you. How many celebrities in the last 10 years have been exposed for being reviled pieces of shit? Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Bill Cosby, Kevin Spacey, Brian Singer. And some of these were not secrets. They were open secrets. They knew about it. 
And then getting into the, the lower levels in YouTube. You know, Shane Dawson, that Charlie person. I, I don't remember the name of that person. Uh, that Dobre guy, like a long time ago. That Dobre guy. There was also the issue with Channel Awesome, if you remember that, with Doug Walker. I know we we haven't talked about it in years, but remember that whole thing where Channel Awesome got exposed for the shady practices that they had? There was there was the fines fine bro incident of 2016. There, you know, Keemstar and his his filth. And I'm I'm trying to remember oh, this. That's the thing. There are so many YouTube dramas, so many things where YouTubers were exposed, grooming young children, being exposed as PDF file downloaders. I mean, it it gets it gets so much. Even back in the day before YouTube was a big thing, I was once a subscriber and once talked to a man by the name of Mr. Anime. Now, to some of you, that name means nothing. But if you were an anime person or an anime YouTuber in the early 2010s, you know who Mr. Anime was and how he set us back many years. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Type in... Mr. Anime YouTube on Google. You will be stunned by the results. Because such an innocent, simple name is tied into such a tragic, dark, twisted event. And that's what I mean. Like, I feel like fame brings the worst out of people. Especially if you were you already had some darkness in you, or at least. You, there was some, there was like something within you that would have led you down that path. Sorry, I'm sweating like a pig. It's hot in here. Um, I mean, because you're so rich, because you're so powerful, because you're so famous, you think that you could get away with it. Like you don't live in the world of responsibilities and consequences anymore. So I can just do whatever the fuck I want. How many celebrities have always thought that? Rich people, executives. And then we get to the Mr. B situation, which since we're talking about him, can I just state for the record right here, right now? I have never talked about Mr. Beast, I think, at all on my channel, but I'm going to state this right now. I never liked him. From the moment he showed up, from the moment he became popular, I never liked Mr. Beast. Because when I saw Mr. Beast, I didn't see a YouTuber. I saw an opportunist. That's what I saw. From the moment I saw a thumbnail or heard about him, I hated everything that he stood for. Everything. I had never felt such a fake person. I have never felt like I was being manipulated by a YouTuber for four until I saw a Mr. Beast thumbnail. Like, I just see that that overly exaggerative smile. That uh, PR smile is what I would call it. And I see these challenges like, oh, stay in the circle for blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm going to go buy a restaurant. Oh, I'm going to do this. Like, for me, it, just, it felt like pretentiousness thrown on screen. A guy desperately trying to get your attention by doing something super outlandish, but there's no heart and soul to it. It feels so phony. It feels so fake. It feels like the antithesis of what it means to be a YouTuber. It's manipulative. It's... <laughs> it, it feels like they said this in the video I saw today where it's like, it feels like a business... Like he was working on like a, a a studio set, which is exactly what I feel like when I see a Mr. Beast production or when I hear about a Mr. Beast production. It doesn't feel like a small guy, YouTuber guy that just wanted to make silly videos and grew big and did all of these things like a, uh, like a Smosh, like a Markiplier, like a PewDiePie, like, you know... There's so many people I could name off the top of my head. But you know what I mean. He, he manufactured. That's the word. It feels manufactured. And obviously it is. 
From the videos I've seen talking about Mr. Beast, he was very smart and meticulous about how he approached making videos, following trends, knowing what his audience likes, and playing off of that. Manipulation at its finest. I hate everything Mr. Beast stands for. And now I even hate the person that is Mr. Beast, whoever the fuck he may be. Because he's a fine example of how fame can go over your head. Where you think you can get away with anything because you have money. Because you have that notoriety. If you have to live in fear of working with someone because they could ruin your career, that's a fucked up person. I'm sorry. Hearing that the guy that was interviewed in that dog... Ooh, his name escapes me again. But in that new video that came out... Like the fact that he was scared to speak his mind because it could ruin his career. That is awful. I hate that. If we can't be honest with each other, then what the fuck's the point? What's the point? Then we're not being genuine here. So yeah, I hate Mr. Beast. I hate everything he stands for. I hate all of his videos. I hate everything that he's ever done. And I feel no remorse. None. For what's happening to him. And, and at all. I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel sorry for him. Deep down in my heart. I feel like it was a long time coming. And he fucking deserves it. It was a long time coming. And he fucking deserves it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to apologize for that opinion. He in my opinion is what's wrong with YouTube. It's been what's wrong with YouTube for a very long time. There's always going to be that one YouTuber that shows up. Where you say. Oh that, that guy is what's wrong with YouTube. It, all, it happens all the time. Like the, the Paul brothers, remember them? Yeah. And I still think they were wrong for YouTube. Keemstar, I still think was wrong for YouTube. Like there's always these trendsetters for the wrong types of trends. And then they end up being popular, whereas people like a Jacksepticeye, a Jax Films, um, like animation teams, like they get no notoriety. It's all these stupid challenge videos and stuff like that. Like YouTube doesn't feel like YouTube anymore. It feels like a product. Not a product of genuine people, but a product from a business. And that's Mr. Beast. He's a business. He's not a YouTuber. He's a business. He's a corporation. And he's as soulless, uncaring, and manipulative like any business out there. And we should not pretend that that's not what he is or what his company stands for. Clearly. In the expose videos that we're seeing. And thank God they're finally coming to light. Because I always knew there was something about him that really irked me. And I'm glad that my suspicions were not... <laughs> I, I lost the word. But I'm glad that my suspicions were kind of validated there. That's the word I'm looking for. But yeah, anyway, that's that's that part of where it brings out the worst in people. When you become rich and famous, you feel like you could get away with a lot of things. You get you feel like you get some leeway or you get like forgiveness because you're so liked and you're so loved and oh, I do all these great things for the for the community. I give money to people. How could I be a bad person? You are a bad person because if you have to do that in front of a camera, you're not a good person. Good people don't need the cameras to do good things. Good people just do good things because it's good. But then there's the other side of it. Where it just drains you. How many YouTubers have spoken about burnout? How many YouTubers have quit? Left the industry? How many... Child actors really become famous later on in their lives. I think one of the biggest examples of this burnout or Hollywood really draining you, sucking you dry. I always think back to Jenny McCurdy. I think that's her name. Or is it Jeanette McCurdy? But the girl that played, I think her name was Sam in iCarly. She worked in the business for many years and then she left it. And from what I heard, she's doing relatively well now. And she's glad she left the business. And I'm happy for her. I'm glad she's doing well. But, man, what a talented actress who got the passion sucked right out of her. And it's tragic. 
We see, we see that all the time with young aspiring actors or young aspiring actresses or young YouTubers trying to make it in the business and, you know, this, this life crushes them. They can't handle it. You know, maybe the anxiety of it all too or the number of suicides that comes with the fame. There's a plethora of actors, actresses, YouTubers who have taken the life because the fame was just too much. Hell, I once was friends with a YouTuber a long time ago. His name was Darkness Dragoon Rose. You have never heard of him in your life. But if it wasn't for that guy, I don't think I would be here this very day talking to all of you. I would not be the black critic guy as you know and love. Or <laughs> that's it's pretty presumptuous love that you know of there. He helped me get started on YouTube. He was actually bigger than me back in the day. And he had suicidal tendencies. He couldn't take it, the notoriety and the attention that he got from his YouTube channel. And he was a smaller YouTuber, keep in mind. You know, he had to quit. He had to, he had to leave the life behind because it was too much for him. And that sucks, you know. This video is 20 minutes long. I, I, Paul, I did not expect it to be that long. I guess my rant went longer than I expected. But my point being, or the question I pondered to you is this. In your opinion, do you, do you think fame is actually worth having? Is being famous worth it? What do you think? In my opinion, no, I don't think fame is worth it. I think I'd rather be well-known than popular. That's a sentiment I've had ever since I was in high school. I had a group of friends. You met my friend Patrick many times on this channel. And he used to say to me all the time, man, Tony, why are you so damn popular? Oh, Tony, why are you so damn popular? He made a fucking, <laughs> what's, he, he made a Facebook page called Tony is so damn popular. And I would always say the same thing to him. I was like, I'm not popular. I'm just well known. And I said that for a reason because I didn't want to be popular. Popular kids live such lonely lives. Popular kids have to fit into some form of trend in order to be popular. I would rather be known by people and liked, respected by people rather than, oh, he's the cool kid. He's the popular kid. Because popularity can dissipate over time. If you fall out of, out of sync with what's trendy, if you fall out of the fray of what people are into. But if you're well known, it doesn't matter what the trend is. They know of you. They know of you through your personality, through your actions, through your other things outside of the fact that you're cool and you look cool and you're sexy or whatever, right? And that's the thing. That's why, in a weird way, I'm glad I'm where I am with my YouTube channel. I, I'm perfectly satisfied. I knew back in the day I wanted to be the next big YouTuber, the next big anime YouTuber. I wanted to represent Guam as like the most popular YouTuber from Guam. That was one of my goals back in the day. And while I don't think that was a foolish goal to have, I just don't hold much weight to it anymore. I'd rather just be me and make the videos I want to make and be my genuine self. And hopefully people radiate to that. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's okay. I live a good life. I have a, I have a great supportive family, a supportive girlfriend, great friends here on Guam, great teacher friends. I live a wonderful life without having to be famous, without having to be popular, without having videos reach a million views. I'm perfectly fine if a video reaches a thousand. Because at least 1,000 people cared enough to hear what I had to say about something. So that's, that's pretty damn impressive. So yeah, what do you guys think? Is it worth being famous? Do you still want to be famous? Do you still want to live the celebrity life? Do you still want to be the big YouTuber? Or do you feel like that's not really a path for you? Or you don't see any real value in living that path? Honestly. Let's have a discussion. Comment below, let me know. Sorry this video is 25 minutes long. Classic BCG, he just keeps talking. I, I just had to share these thoughts. I had to really get out my feelings about Mr. Beast. I've hated that guy so for so long. And it felt really cathartic to say all of that now. 
So let me know in the comment section below, guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this topic. And, you know, even if you want to share your thoughts on Mr. Beast too, please put it in the discussion. Thank you all for watching. Oh, by the way, just uh, so you know, I've uh, been working real hard on some uh, new content. I believe you see some uh, videos, right? Oh, are, are those three produced videos over there on my on my laptop screen? Oh, they are. Oh, I wonder what they are. I wonder what they're going to be. Well, I guess you're going to have to wait and see, aren't you? But until those videos come out, guys, if you'd like to see more videos of this channel, be a part of the Black Critic Crew, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. And I'm Tony Watt II, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube.